James Swanick here, and today we're talking to 62-year-old real estate investor Joe Brennan from Long Island, New York, who is 96 days alcohol-free today. Joe Brennan, welcome to the show, and congratulations. Well, thank you, James. I appreciate that. Um, If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here, so I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you very much, and you're welcome as well. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe. So um, I am. I have been married for 35 years uh, to my wonderful wife Mary. I have two sons, uh, one who just got married last week. Um, the other was married a few years ago, and and I am a grandfather now to a little baby girl, Parker. Um, I am a real estate investor, and I also consult for for another company, um, for a construction company. Um, but we have a uh, we buy properties down in Florida, and I have one right now in Tallahassee, Florida, 158 unit. Um, and um, life is good. Life has been really good these last 96 days. <laughs> Does that imply that life wasn't as good prior to the 96 days, Joe? Yes, it does. Well, uh, listen. I have a wonderful life. I can't complain. I have a great family and children, and and but I was not where I should be. Um, I was not as alert, as clear, as sharp. Um, uh, so this changed all that. Um, it's amazing how much energy I have now. It's uh, so much more energy. I remember James, you and I had that first call that I that you talked to me. And we talked about the things I was missing or wasn't getting done and all those things, you know, the, the working hours at night, um, spending more time on the real estate and, and the investors, working on now a coaching business uh, that I want to get involved in. None of those things could I ever have gotten done because I didn't, I was tired at night all the time from drinking. Um, so it really has changed everything. The other thing is, you know, I would get a little uh, at times, uh, a little rambunctious and my wife really appreciates the fact that that doesn't happen anymore. So, uh, yeah, I just feel great. I mean, um, and the other thing is it's a, you realize that it's something, and I think I've heard it so many times from so many people, it's such a commonplace thing to drink. And it's like, if you're not drinking, you're the oddball. Um, but once you stop doing it, you realize how much smarter you are than everybody else. Um, uh, uh, so now I don't, I'm not a preacher, so I don't preach to people and my wife still drinks and we go out and that's fine. But, you know, uh, my brother who's, uh, said to me, Joe, I am just so goddamn impressed with you for what you're doing. It's just an amazing thing. And, uh, I know how he is. He's competitive with me, so I wouldn't be surprised. He started to say to me, you know, I didn't have a drink. I, I decided I'm not going to drink for three hours. Then I'm not going to drink. And I said, ah, oh, here it goes. He's starting. He's starting to realize. He said, I held out all the way till 11 o'clock at the night of the wedding. So well, good for you. That's great. So, um, but it, and the other thing about this program, which, uh, you know, I could talk all night, so I apologize. But the people I've met, uh, uh, speaking to people on Marco Polo, really gained friendships with other people. Um, through your program that really connects people. Um, I think that's the best part of this thing because you realize, um, you know, it's not just me. I mean, like a lot of people are going through what I went through. Um, A lot of people are not being as productive as they should. And um, so just the amount of people I've learned and the coaches you have in Victoria and Sarah have been phenomenal. So um to anybody who's out there who's thinking or, or concerned about where they are in their life, uh, this program really changed everything for me. Oh, thank you for sharing, Joe. Appreciate those kind words and congratulations. It, it sounds like people like your brother are noticing the change in you and without you actually pitching them on living an alcohol-free lifestyle, they're noticing your way of being having shifted and they want a piece of that action. Yes. Yeah. I think I think that's what it is. Everybody who I've said, like uh, anybody who's asked, and I said, oh, you know, 90 days. And they're like, what? 90 days? Are you kidding me? How did you do that? That's unbelievable. You know, like it's just, and I'm like, well, it's not really. Once you start to realize how good you feel, it's like being on a diet, right? Once you start losing weight, 
you start saying to yourself, wow, I can keep doing this. And then with this, with all the positives that come out of this, which includes losing weight, of course, um, uh, that's the other thing people are noticing. You know, it's like, wow, Joe, you look great. Um, my brother and his wife, the one who talked about it, said, how much weight did you lose? How much weight did you lose? I said, I don't know, like seven or eight times. No, oh, you lost much more than that. You, I've never seen you look so good. So that, that also helps. <laughs> that helps feed it all. But is it, uh, is it curious to you or um, how much people are impressed by you performing the simple act of not drinking? Like, is it interesting to you or is anything you've discovered about um, as a culture, how we perceive alcohol based on the, these kind of, wow, that's incredible. Wow. Amazing. 90 days responses that you've been getting from people. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a nice thing, but it's, it's, it's a sad thing as well. Right. Because the grip of alcohol on the society is so in, it's so amazingly invasive um, that if you're, as I said before, if you're not drinking, you are the oddball. And it's, it's, but I also think that people don't see other people stop drinking that often. So it's kind of like, like my brother, right? He probably would have never thought of it. So the more of us and the more James of all your students that get out there, the more people start to say, you know, you're right, Joe, I, I don't feel so good sometimes waking up in the morning and I don't, you know, like, so, um, because all we see is alcohol everywhere we look. Right. I said to my, I said to my son the other day and he started laughing. I said, Kyle, is there any place or any event that you ever go to where there's not drinking involved? And he stopped for a second and he goes, no, I'm, I can't think of any. So it just permeates our whole society. And it's, it's just very routine. And I have found that being that person in the beginning was a little tough, but now it's like, I don't know, it's like a sense of pride for me to be the person in the room that, by the way, as you well know, James, and going to events and stuff, you see a lot of funny stuff when you're the only one not drinking. <laughs> At my son's wedding, though, like you said, Dan, uh, people thought I was drinking because I was having a great time, an awesome time. And when I told people, no, I didn't drink, I said, you didn't drink? I was like, no, I didn't. I just had a great time. So Yeah. You mentioned your son's wedding. Is that right? Yes. Yes. We yeah. had my, son, my son's wedding last week. And where was that? So it was on Long Island on a, on a, in a beautiful place on Long Island. And we had a, an absolutely phenomenal band. Um, and I was out on the dance floor all night and having a big fun time dancing some stuff with some of the young guys and stuff, getting out there and doing it. And, uh, people thought I was drinking, but I wasn't I had a great time. Felt great. The next morning I was the first one up. I was out and, uh, it was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I can totally relate to that. I've been out before at events, weddings, parties, and, the following morning, maybe people are meeting up for a brunch or a lunch or something, and they're nursing hangovers. Uh, and uh, somehow the conversation comes up that, you know, I'm alcohol free or I don't drink. And they're just amazed. And th th they'll say something along the lines of, You were drinking last night. I was like, No, I wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, you were. You were like, Yeah. 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 I'm like, exactly. No, it really wasn't. Yeah, I was at. Uh, I remember being in. I was in Canberra, Australia. Canberra is the the capital of Australia. I was I was there for a friend's wedding about four months ago, and uh, beautiful wedding. Uh, a friend of mine who used to be a a, a journalist married a uh, publicist for one of the Australian politicians, and it was a very kind of who's who of Australian politics at this wedding. And um, you know, the party went late. Uh, it was an open bar, of course, and I was drinking soda waters all night and I was dancing. And I remember uh, one couple uh, asked me, hey, can I get, I'm, we're going to the bar, you want a drink? I said, yeah, yeah, grab me a soda water. Just soda water? I'm like, yeah, 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 just soda water. It'd be great. <laughs> okay. So they went off. They got me a soda water, br brought it back, and they said, oh, you're, you're not drinking? I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I haven't drunk since 2010. Oh, did you, did you have a did you have a problem? Did you, you have a you? problem? <laughs> I'm like, no, not really. I was a societally acceptable drinker, you know. I would just, but I just, 
realized that it was slowing me down. I put on a bit of weight. I was a bit tired and foggy and irritable. So I took a break to see what it would feel like. And I liked how it felt. So I kept going and it's been 11 and a half years. And then they were, they were just amazed. They started, they were grilling me for the next 20 minutes. This kind of sweet Caroline was playing in the background and, <laughs> and the band was playing and they were just grilling me on this. And, uh, Wow, what's it like? Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah, drinking's so prevalent, isn't it? Oh, I've always I've I've often thought about cutting back or quitting back, but it's so hard, isn't it? Because everyone's, you know, everyone around you drink. Very, very common conversation like this. And um the following morning, my friend and his new bride um set up a little marquee tent in a park, a very picturesque park in Canberra overlooking a, a lake. And uh said meet everyone meet there from 10 until one i think it was like that they call it coffee and croissants i think it was well i was up at um 7 30 i went for a run i'd done some journaling and then i kind of <laughs> showered and, and strolled over there at 10 and people were like oh we're like oh that was a great night but oh yeah i'm feeling a bit rough today oh how about you and i said oh i'm okay i went for a run this morning you went for a run what are you t- what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. How did you do that? I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then someone else said he doesn't drink. You don't drink? I was like, no. But you were drinking last night. No, no. <laughs> but I saw you screaming Bon Jovi living on a prayer at midnight, 1230, <laughs> on the dance floor, sweating and everything. I'm like, yeah, but I wasn't drinking. <laughs> Absolutely amazed and astounded. And yeah. so... It's 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 so prevalent in society, isn't it? This kind of awe and amazement that someone might be able to do something like that. It is. It is. And um, the only difference between you and I, James, is since maybe because I'm 62 and you were so young, I was aching. My knees, my everything was aching from the dancing the night before. <laughs> my head felt great, but my knees. <laughs> Tell me, Joe. Um, what was your drink or drinks of choice? I only drank wine. I would drink Pinot Grigio. Okay. That was it. I never drank. I, I haven't drank hard liquor since I was a young kid. Um, and uh, I used to drink a little beer. I, I would drink beer. IPAs lately with my sons because they like the IPAs. So if we go to a game or something like that, I would drink beer. But with my wife or when we're out to restaurants and stuff, I, I would drink Pinot Grigio. That's it. Mm. But I would have, we'd sit at home and we got in the habit, especially during COVID, of drinking every night. And, you know, I'd have three, four without a problem. And then get up at 4.15 the next morning. Yeah, you're an early riser, certainly. So when when were you, what time were you drinking the Pinot Grigio each night? I would drink it from, say, 6 o'clock to like 8.39. And then, and then what go time to bed at 10. Drink? I'd go to bed at 10. Okay, so you drink it from six to eight thirty nine. Three glasses, as you say, three glasses. Of At least three, yeah. Usually three, sometimes four. And when it was three, or sometimes four, were you um, buzzed or slightly drunk, or were you just normal, neutral, and it was just I, you know. I, you know, when at home and and drinking like that, I was more just tired. Um, maybe a little buzz, but not really that much, you know, like I was just tired. Yeah. And then when you slept and when you woke up, at, you said 4.15, you set an alarm for 4.15 or you just naturally wake up then? For the most part, I naturally wake up, but I always set an alarm. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I do naturally wake up. Um, but I will tell you and uh, was... And I know I've heard this story many times since mine, but I remember saying to you, and this is what drew, drove me to you, was waking up in the morning and saying, I'm not going to drink tonight because I was ashamed that I was drinking so much. And that's what I would get. I'd get up in the morning. You know what? Tonight, I'm not going to drink. And then I would drink. Uh, you know what? Tonight, I'm not going to drink um, because I don't feel good. I don't, I don't like this feeling. I don't like that feeling. Um, and that's what that ultimately... I got to the point with that, with some other health issues, because my brother died of a heart attack. And so I was getting my heart checked and things like that. And I just finally got to the point where it was like, you know what? Enough, enough. So. What was that feeling when you would wake up at 4, 4.15? Like, uh, 
other than I'm not going to drink tonight, what physically, what was driving you to say to yourself, I'm not going to drink tonight? I, I, I felt tired. Um, sometimes woke up with a headache. I'd take a, um, uh, an extra strength Excedrin um, in the morning. Um, and also just thinking back, you know, saying, well, what are you doing? Like, uh, why are you spending your nights? You could have gone to the gym, could have spent more time reading or uh, doing the crossword puzzle, which I do tons of them now. Um, you know, what are you doing? And I knew that Mary would stop, you know, my wife. She'd go down, watch TV. She'd have her two, and, and that was it. And I'd keep drinking. So I, it was not, uh, I did not like who I was. Mm. I also didn't like, I'm a very disciplined person. So I didn't like the fact that I couldn't stop when I wanted to stop. That bothered me. I gave up cookies for two years once, and I'm a junk food addict. I was only giving it up for 40 days, and someone dared me. I gave, so it bothered me that, I would say in the morning that I don't want to drink tonight, and I would. That really bothered me because I'm like, what What the hell is wrong with you? Like, stop. So, And what, what did you identify was, quote, unquote, wrong with you? Um, to me, it's, it's not normal to be drinking every night of the week. It's just not. I mean, I, some people say, oh, I have one drink, and I not whatever, that's fine for you. But it's a, at that point, to me, if you have a couple of drinks on the weekend or you go out to dinner and you have a drink or two, that to me, that's what it should be. It shouldn't be that you, what happened, James, was my whole day would re revolve around drinking, right? Because I was thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to drink tonight. You know, like, oh, I can't go here because I, I want to get home. I want to have my drinks. All right. I can't go to the gym because if I do, then I can't drink. And then so it, it became this thing where it was spending way too much of my time focusing on it. Um, and, you know, it, it, I'm just so happy that, you know, I, I had started looking you up a few weeks before, um, you know, just I was looking up, just stopping drinking or whatever. And, and then one morning I just woke up and said, all right, I'm calling them tonight uh, and, I'm, and I'm doing it. So. Mm. So you were just searching around on the internet, were you, or did you see yes. one of my paid ads? I, you, know, I, you know what? I don't, I think, I think, James, I, I think you asked me this one. I think it was on Facebook, but, I, you know, I, I don't remember. I did, I was definitely looking online, but I don't know if I saw you on Facebook, then went and went online as well, or I don't remember, but I definitely did go online as well. Mm. Yeah, got it. And... During the process, during the last 90, how long has it been? 96 days. During the last yep. 96 days, you said that you noticed some changes in you. I mean, other people notice changes in you. Obviously, you lost some weight. You look great. You, you mentioned you had more clarity and, and energy. Is there something in particular besides dancing with energy on the, on the dance floor at your son's <laughs> wedding, maybe work-related, business-related, where, you where you've identified that being alcohol-free has served you in a very positive manner over the past 96 days. Oh, absolutely. Um, at my real estate business, I'm now spending what those hours that I used to spend it on, I got added to that. I'm probably spending an extra eight hours a week just doing more real estate stuff. I'm now in a coaching program to learn to be a life coach. So I'm spending like five or six hours a week on classes and studying and things like that that time I wasn't using it all. I found that all back. Um, I also have this confidence, this inner confidence that I've always been a confident person in myself, but the confidence of knowing that I'm not doing that anymore, the confidence of knowing that I'm the clearest guy there, the confidence of knowing that if my wife wants to go to a restaurant, that's an hour away. All right, let's go. I would never do that before because I had a drink. So. I just have a, a confidence about me that permeates because I'm proud of what I've done. I feel great. And uh, there's a real confidence there as well. Yeah, fantastic. And what has your wife shared with you about your experience? Oh, my wife loves it. She, um, she always felt that I couldn't, didn't know when to stop, um, which she always could. Um, and 
she, we were just out to dinner and she was talking about, you know, sometimes she'd get into arguments with me and it was the alcohol. And I would say, well, she, I said, I'm not doing that anymore. She said, absolutely not. It's, she said, it's such a pleasure now. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, it's, I, it's great. She is, she loves it. Absolutely loves it. Mm, fantastic. What's your intention uh, from here on, Joe? Like, what's your intention around I, alcohol, your habits, those kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, I, there were times during this where I said, oh, you know, when it's over, maybe I'll have a drink. When I, you know, I don't, right now, I don't feel the need to do that. Um, I'm not saying I won't ever have a drink again, but right now, I'm, I'm, it's going really well. I'm enjoying what it is. Every once in a while, I feel like having a drink, but it's like, you know what? A lot. Um, I never really got horribly difficult for me, um, but I did have temptation. You always have temptation. So recently, after my 90, um, uh, yesterday I had a problem that, that I have some sort of foot disease thing that they told me about that was totally shocking. But the interesting thing was, I'm like, no, I'm not going to drink. I don't need to drink just because I got bad news on something that came in. And so so I have a much more of a, um, a strong feeling on this. Um, I, I will tell you this, though, as, as I've said to you that I'm very competitive, is I've always said to myself, well, I sure I could have one drink. But then I said to myself, yeah, but I don't want to break the strain. Like, I, I'm going so well here. I don't want to break it. I'm doing great. I'm at 96 days. How long am I going to get this to go? So, And by the way, I got to catch up to James. He's only nine years ahead of me. but nine and a half or 10. Um, but so my intention right now is to not drink for the foreseeable future. Mm. You said you're a competitive guy. Is that right? Or is it your brother uh, is a competitive guy? No, I am. We're both. Yes. I, I come from a competitive family. Yes. And I am competitive. I see. So does that mean that if someone throws down the gauntlet and says, yes, uh, you're going to be alcohol free for the next, et cetera, et cetera. Like put it, put a figure in there that you will commit to that. Yes. Yeah. All that's, right. that's, I told you, I gave up cookies for Lent, which is 40 days. And then people are saying, ah, oh, you, you can't do it. And, and I ended up cause I kept going, going, going for two years. I didn't have cookies. Yeah. Cause I was like, awesome. no. so, but, so yeah. and that's what yeah. frustrated me about the drinking that I couldn't stop it. But now yeah. that I've stopped it, I'm like, okay. So have you have you got a, a time frame in your mind now, or is it just day by day, or is nah, it? Nah, you know, I figure the summer. Look, the summer's difficult, right? Summer's difficult. I have a beach house. You know, our 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 routine always has been, you know, go down to the beach at four o'clock, three o'clock, open up the drinks at five, sit on the beach for a couple of hours, watch the sun go down, and you know. But um, plus, there's all sorts of beach parties, people having beers and stuff, but. Uh, you know, that's fine. I'm I'm not worried about it. I stay for the summer. Usually the other big thing is giant games, the football games. Uh, we I have season tickets with my sons. And we usually do a little tailgating before with a few beers. Nothing big, but I always enjoy that because it's with my sons and we pick the beers, the, the IPAs and stuff. But I'm not going to be doing that. I do yeah, pick some good... Yeah, I, 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 I've decided that I'm not going to do that. So it's at least through September whatever and we'll go from there yeah so um you'll still go to the games and you'll still do oh the absolutely oh yeah. i'll still do the tailgating absolutely yeah i'll still do the things i do with my sons but but i just won't drink the the beer yeah exactly yeah got it well here's the thing you don't have to drink the beer in order to enjoy the experience with your sons in order absolutely to enjoy, in order to enjoy the game enjoy the giants game you don't need the drinks to dance like a crazy man on the dance floor at your son's wedding you don't need the drinks to go to the work functions tell me tell me a little bit about the work functions that you attend in real estate yeah so so we've had um we've had a few i work one of my bosses is an irishman uh, a real irishman over from ireland and is a big drinker um and the guys we go out to lunch with tend to be big drinkers so the last four or five, because we haven't had a lot, I have not drank at all. Um, and boy, can they pound them. Wow. 
Um, and I would, in the past, I would be sitting there having three wines, whatever with them. But you know what? After one, no one says anything like it's, it was fine. It was fine. I went to an event, uh, an evening event, and it was a cocktail party, you know, and I had my salsa and, you know, it was fine. You know, it's like you said, at the end of the day, people don't really care. Although I will say this, my good friend said to Mary the other day, is Joe OK? Because more than anything, we had a really the last we a uh, few nights i went to bed late because we had a wedding that we went to on friday night another wedding friday night and then we watched my granddaughter on saturday night because my son and his wife went to a wedding so two nights in a row i got to bed after one o'clock and i don't ever go to bed after until 10 o'clock every single night no matter what so when i was at their house and they were all drinking and i was having soda he was like you okay and i'm like well i'm just tired <laughs> i'm really tired i'm not used to being up two nights in a row like that so um but that was it uh, you know it's it the positives are so far outweigh any wanting to drink the positive things that have happened to me that it, it, it's just not worth it right now mm. uh, just finally joe was there something that you discovered about yourself uh, along the journey you were inside of our 90 day program project 90 you met a whole host of other people. Was there something noteworthy or interesting that you discovered through that process? Well, I think, and I might have said this to you before, and I, I think when you and I had our first conversation, I said this to you, I truly believe in coaching. I think everything I've been successful in through my two real estate type businesses, this life coaching, I'm doing this. And I think what happens is when you're being coached and when there are other people involved, it just raises your whole game. I mean, I'm the type of person that I want to do well with other people. I want to make sure that I show up. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing my part. And I think your program brings so many people together and you get to see so many different types of people and you also are being held accountable. And I think that's the greatest thing about coaching is being held accountable. Um, we, we, I, my wife and I just had this conversation at dinner talking about how coaching is so valuable to me because I remember my real first real estate coaching thing. I had homework to do every week and I had to show up on that Wednesday. And if I, I would be mortified if I didn't do that homework to make sure, because I was being held accountable and your program does that you hold people accountable. And not only do you hold people accountable though, you make it fun. Because the Marco, it's not this serious, dour, dull. We have fun. People talk. The Marco Polos are great. You really feel like you're having a good time while you're trying to stop drinking. So I really tip my hat to you, James, because this is a phenomenal program that you've put together. It really is. Um, I, I can't. I would recommend it to everyone and anyone that I talk to who is ready to do it. Um, because I really think you've put together a great formula for allowing people to not only stop drinking, but enjoy the process and meet a lot of good people. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate that. And congratulations on your success so far. And uh, it won't just be you who gets the benefit. It'll be your wife and your sons and uh, absolutely construction company associates and other people in your real estate business. All these other people who come into contact with you are all going to benefit from from your new way of being as well. Absolutely. I, I, I truly believe that. I truly believe that. So I thank you um, it, because, as I said, without you, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like I wouldn't be where I am. So tribute to you and your, and your team. You're so welcome, Joe. Congratulations again. Joe Brennan, 62, real estate investor from Long Island, New York. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. 
You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222, or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.